Welcome back. Now, former ESCOM CEO Andre Dereta has made damning allegations about corruption and fraud. This at the power utility. In an interview on ENCA, he said, among other things, that a cabinet minister told him to let people eat and that at least a billion rand is stolen every single month from ESCOM. Let's get some reaction now from Corruption Watch senior researcher Melusi Ngala, who joins me this morning to take this conversation forward. Melusi, thank you so much for your time and good morning to you. Uh, we may we made, uh, you know, an announcement after ESCOM released a statement that its former CFO, uh, Mr. Kalib Kassim, who had been uh, CFO from November 2018, will take over the rounds with immediate effect as its acting group CEO. And, and I, I want to get your reaction, uh, especially what you think perhaps might be some of the expectations from South Africans in terms of the work that lies ahead of him post uh, Andre Dereta's tenure. Uh, good morning, Dumela, and uh, good morning to your viewers, and thank you for having us. Uh, no doubt the incumbent, or at least um, in his acting capacity, will have to basically take the, um, the position by understanding what's currently happening in terms of the load shedding situation, because it has quite an impact on the South African economy. Um, but beyond that, in terms of operational matters, to actually get to grips with the entire corruption issue um, as spelled out by his predecessor. Mm. So, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, he'll have to work hand in hand with the um, board of ESCOM as well as um, the staff, senior staff within um, ESCOM and try to eradicate some of these problems that um, ESCOM has been facing. But beyond that, what South Africans want to see is um, perhaps, you know, a clear plan on how we're going to actually deal with load shedding going forward, especially after um, the president's announcement of a minister of electricity. Absolutely. A lot of questions uh, in terms of how exactly this minister of electricity will work alongside uh, the ESCOM captain being the CEO to steer the ship in the right direction. But I mean, we, we can't ignore the damning allegations, Melusi, that, uh, you know, Andre Dereta made during his conversation with Annika Larson. Uh, what's your reaction to, you know, allegations of political interference, uh, amounts of a billion rand being lost monthly from ESCOM, this just amongst other things. It almost feels like um, a script that South Africans are all too familiar with. Um, you know, for so many years, we heard through testimony at State Capture um, Commission that, you know, ESCOM has been grappling with issues of corruption, um, improper conduct, et cetera, et cetera. And here we are again, finding ourselves in a situation. And as told by Andre de Reiter that, you know, there are serious issues of corruption, but these issues are perpetuated by high ranking officials. And these are political figures, people perhaps even um, in, in cabinet. So um, as, as much as it is unpleasant, um, and it may be shocking to some, um, to an organization such as, such as ours, where, you know, we deal with these kind of issues, well, uh, based on testimonies that we hear from members of the public, some who happen to be ordinary employees from ESCOM, it comes with no surprise that these are the kind of issues that the parastatal is struggling with. And at the center of that is the African National Congress. Mm. So with that being said, do you believe someone has a case to answer to here? Well, clearly, um, if, if the allegations are anything to go by, one would hope that um, the outgoing CEO would have at least taken some steps in, um, in reporting as per his fiduciary responsibility to say that, you know, um, these are the kind of issues that I'm dealing with and that it's not only something that is limited to um, his uh, public opinion and the way he explained it in the, in the interview on, on ENCA. So, you know, a lot needs to be done. Many people clearly need to be held accountable and many questions need to be asked. And those questions need to be asked by our law enforcement. Mm. And you would also hope that Parliament would play a role in asking some of those questions as well.
Yeah, because I, I spoke to Kayama Gaika earlier on MLC and he said that as the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises, they would need to call him back to still account and give a clear account of, you know, some of those allegations that he made during that conversation with Anna Colossen, but to make them officially in front of Parliament. But I asked you again before um, if you think someone is a case to answer to here, but we've heard, because we've heard from different politicians um, adding on their opinion. Pravin Gordon saying that Andre should have kept his political opinions private. Uh, Figilam Barula saying that, listen, you were the CEO, you were at the helm. Why are you pointing fingers when you need to take responsibility? Uh, I suppose some saying it seems uh, these politicians are deflecting on the real issues. We need the evidence. We need to know who is the senior minister or some of these politicians that Andre is referring to that are looting this power utility. I mean, we can appreciate um, Andre the writer speaking in his uh, private capacity um, as an outgo outgoing CEO. He has resigned, he has views, and he felt that these matters need to come to light. And as a country that encourages free speech and more importantly for people to speak out when there's wrongdoing, I don't think we should be shunning him for that. Um, but let's not be surprised as well that, you know, um, Figil and Balula, for example, will be, you know, um, basically speaking rhetoric about the wrongdoing that Andre has done. And there is a case to be made about that. We can speak about corruption on the one hand that is owed to the ANC, which is something that the ANC's president has accused the party of itself. And on the other hand, we can speak about incompetencies or failures that are owed to Andre de Reiter. That the, the two are not mutually exclusive. Mm. I have to let you go, Melissa. Before I do, uh, briefly, if you may, as you provide this answer, as Corruption Watch, what would you like to see as the next steps? Uh, the next step, as um, you've mentioned, you know, we would be like to see the um, parliamentarians responsible for uh, public enterprise actually um, seeking more answers about the allegations that were raised and to call and to conduct um, an inquiry of some sort looking into what was said. But beyond that, we need law enforcement to, to look into these matters. And I'm hoping that um, Andre the writer will, will, will actually work together with law enforcement so that more information can come to light and more evidence can be provided so that South Africans can actually see accountability taking place. I appreciate you speaking to me about this. Melu Singala, uh, senior researcher at Corruption Watch, thank you so much for adding your voice to uh, what is definitely has the whole country uh, talking. It has ESCOM itself uh, talking, different politicians adding their voice as well, businesses and uh, as well as a parliament. I suppose that call being made once again to our moderator to provide more details about these damning allegations out at ESCOM.